Fun. Heated. Explosive. Intense. Violent. Hard. Hitting. There's no love love. I mean, a lot of times you see these rivalries. It's a rivalry because they started playing for 50 years or 40 years. This rivalry was built on, we feel we're tougher than you are. And we're going to show you. They pride themselves on being physical. We prided ourselves on being physical. And only one physical team was going to win this ball game. We felt we're the most physical team. And I'm sure they felt the same way. But there's no love lost. And there's still no love lost between these two teams. Yeah, definitely. I feel the same way he feels. You know, it was going to be a violent, explosive game. And, you know, whoever the tougher team was, whoever, you know, dominated, played more physical than the other team, was the one that was going to come out with the victory. I hate to say this, but it wasn't just good enough for us to win. We really tried to hurt you guys. No we question. Really, 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 That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like when I I'm trying to put you, somebody at the I'm game. trying to make you feel pain. Yes. I want you to yes. understand that I'm here. Yes. Every time I hit mm-hmm. you, you're going to feel exactly what I want you to, and that's pain. Yes. I want you to understand that I don't want you to make it out of this game. Yes. I want you to come back next week, yes, but that, I want to put you out of this game. Yes, yes. We took great pleasure. Oh, look, man, sure hope he plays next week, but I'm glad he's out of this game. And you know, helping nobody. Help no you up for what? No, I, I'm not you down for a reason. I'm not helping you up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Don't reach your hand out because you're not going to get nothing. You're going <laughs> to nah, get this, and I'm nah. going to pull it back on you. I'm going to talk bad about yeah. you. I might even say something about your girlfriend. Yeah. You, why? Don't let me have no inside information. <laughs> well, I got some inside information. Of, oh, you pers- use, oh yeah. I'm using all that. Uh, of course. But the thing is, this rivalry is not even 20 years old yet because I got to the Ravens in 2000, and it kind of started then. We opened the season my first year in, in Baltimore in the old Three Rivers. We beat the Steelers 16 nothing. Um, they asked me after the game. Long I before said, my time. I think I was in high school. <laughs> they said, they asked me about the Steelers, and I said, this was the worst Pittsburgh Steelers team that I had ever, ever seen. So they come back, I think, week eight, week nine. They beat us 9-6. Coach Kyle sends a message to me, tell Shannon Sharp the Pittsburgh Steelers are just fine. I'm like, okay, touche, we got it. Next year, we beat them in, in the New Heinz field. Mm-hmm. Plexico Burrs, he's doing all this talking. I said, man, you look here. Y'all tell Plexiglass to shut up and just catch the football. We're just fine over here. And it was on and cracking because we played you guys that Sunday night. You guys beat us. Uh, ended up, we played y'all again in the divisional round of the playoffs. Y'all ended up losing to the Patriots that year. But it was born then. We just, from that point on, we hated you guys. And I'm glad I left that thing in good hands because Ray and Suggs and Eric Reed, they kept it going on the Ravens side. And Heinz Ward and you came in and the other guys, they kept it going. So it's an ongoing saga now. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad to have participated and also started. Yeah. Yeah, you did, <laughs> see how I started it? Started. You see how I started that thing and get up out of there? Because that thing off, was getting too let, physical. Yeah. Well, leading up to the week, for me, it's, uh, to be honest, my preparation is no different than any other game. Um, it's just now, you know, I know what type of game it's going to be. It's going to be a 60-minute all-out brawl. You know, it was a, a fight with, you know, two defenses that, uh, Whoever came out on top, that was usually the winner. What happened was is that the old Ravens moved from Cleveland. And so when we got there, I mean, the Ravens weren't that good. There was really nothing for them to talk about. So we're starting to get good. Ravens have that historic defense in 2000. We were in the Super Bowl. So now we're sure enough talking. We feel, you know, we got our chest out. We won the Super Bowl, blah, blah, blah. And so it kind of started from that point on that, okay, Steelers are known for defense, the steel curtain. Joe Green and Lambert and Ham and Mel Blunt, and you see all these guys that mm-hmm. you're like, okay, but Ray and them wanted that identity. They want to be Definitely. identified if you play in the AFC North in defense, it's the Ravens, not the Steelers. So they prided themselves on being a physical, pounded, smash mouth. You're not going to run the football. We're trying to knock your quarterback out. Yes. If we get a chance to hit your quarterback, we're trying to knock him out of the game. Just so you know, let that be clear. We're trying to knock your quarterback mm-hmm. out of the game. And if they get a clean, legal shot, no question, they're taking it. We had a number of games where, uh, you know, I, I think it was, uh, what, was it McGahee that was there? Yeah. Willis? Yeah. yeah. We, we were good for putting him to sleep. Oh, yeah, Ryan Clark. Yeah. Right? And Hines was sneaking thing. folk. Oh, sneaking them, getting them all. <laughs> had them all. Looking like head on a swivel, looking for everything. It didn't, it, Listen, it, it, the one time they got Hines, dude, they did get Hines. It was at Hines Field, okay? You them. could not stop them dudes from yelling and screaming. We finally got it. We finally got it, Sam. <laughs> yeah, 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 da, da, da. Yeah. Dude. They, oh, they, 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 they slept him. They were ecstatic. You got to because, man, Hines was sneaking, folks, man. Hines, 
Man, they put a rule. Got to keep your head on the swivel. Look, they got a rule called the Heinz Ward rule about exactly. the crackback. Exactly, no crackback. He, he broke Keith, Keith Rivers' jaw in Cincinnati. In Cincinnati, popped so. it loose. <laughs> That's what made me keep my head on the swivel when I'm yeah. running for somebody. I'm yeah. make sure I'm, I'm like, yeah, Heinz told me don't don't let him get you. But this rivalry, look, they played the same for the longest time. They played the same brand of football. Yes. They ran the football and they played great defense. Built the behind. same way. Built the same way. Built the exact now the same Steelers way. throw the football a little bit more now. But the nastiness and a lot of the, the guys are still there. Mm-hmm. As long as Suggs is still there and some of the guys that were that played with you are still there, this rivalry is going to be ongoing. And because usually the winner of these games are the team that's going to win the division. Yeah. There's so much riding yeah. on this. The division champ, sometimes you play guys in the playoffs and you move on and they're going home. So there's added pressure to know that this team is in your division and the reason why they're home was because of you. Oh, that does it. Oh, that does it. Ooh, that does it. You know, so good. The, the funny thing about the rivalry is that we really didn't talk to the offense. In warm-ups, we talked trash to the linebackers because we'd warm up next to, right. to Ray and <laughs> yeah. Suggs and all them, and we talking <laughs> boss garbage trash to them. <laughs> you ain't going to do this. Y'all suck. You everything else. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even talk really to the offense. Right. We trash talked to the D. Man, and see, this. Uh, did you play with Earl Holmes? No, I didn't get a chance to play with him. Man, I was mic'd up on that uh, on Sunday night football, and we scored a touchdown. And I ran to him, and I told him, I said, you the weak link. I said, these other guys, I said, Porter and Gilden, they good. You, you trash. So you the weak link. We're going to take advantage of you. And he caught me slipping. Ran a shell across. Head wasn't. Bop. Got me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weak link that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, 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 he caught me slipping. Yeah. i like, you got me. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I get you. I just like trash talking. I, my job was, you know, I'm talking. I might not catch but one or two passes, but you'd have thought I had a 10 catch, 100 yard performance the way mm-hmm. I'm talking because that was my job. My job was to talk and try to get you off your game because you worried about what I'm doing and now we done snuck the back into the flat or you supposed to be in the curl of the flat, but you carrying me up the scene because you don't want me to catch a pass and we done got a receiver in the flat catching the pass. So I didn't have necessarily big games. I caught a touchdown here or there. But my job was to just mess with, uh, you know, I like talking trash to Earl Holmes because it seemed to bother him the most. Uh, Coach Coward told me later, because I worked with him for a number of years at CBS, that he would always tell the guys, don't talk to Sharp. You know what he's trying to do. Yes. But yeah. I made it so. I put so much icing on that cake, they had no choice but to eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for me, uh, what I thought was going to be my hardest struggle was Ogden. And I yeah. guess I caught him at the later part of his career because my first year starting. In uh, 2007, I had a great game against him. It was, you know. Man, that man is 6'10". He had to punch down. Listen, you could run up under him. He wasn't punching too much. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm like, the, you know, John Dawkins, this is future Hall of Famer, you yeah, know. You got and, it? Yeah, I got at 10 tackles. I had three and a half sacks. Oh, man, I got to tell Jay about that. He yeah. didn't tell me about this one. Oh, yeah. That game, man, it just felt like I could do no wrong, to be honest with you. I, I, when guys say he was in his own, like, I did wrong things. I blitzed when I was supposed to be in curl flat <laughs> and got a sack. It was One like, no question, nothing I could do. And I literally felt in my mind, I'm like, there's nothing they could do to stop me. He launched your career. Yeah, that was a Sunday or Monday night game. We pounded them. I think it was like 38 to 7. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to have to call Joe about that one. Yeah. yeah he ain't mentioned that one. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. But I'm going to say my hardest tackle, though, was J. Lou, dude. That that boy, oh, that, ball. Woo, <laughs> that was a handful. Listen, I hit him. I came off a block. He was right there coming down. Bop stood him, got the tackle, and I was like, damn, you know, you get that stinger in your yeah. shoulder. I'm like, ooh, that stinger came and here come foot. Yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, uh-huh. talking. I'm like, dude, don't say nothing else to him. I'm like, my shoulder a little sore right now. I'm like, I'm feeling this right. <laughs> Were you there on that Monday night game when uh, uh, Ray separated a uh, uh, Rashard Mendenhall's shoulder? Yeah. Yeah. On the Monday night when you talking yeah. about he ain't worried about Ray and Ray. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Ray caught it slipping. No question. No question. <laughs> like I said, that's what the game was about. It was about enforcing your will and making sure, you know, he yeah. felt you. Win, lose, or draw, he yeah. was going to know that next day he well, was Well, that's what game. football was really based upon. It was based on intimidation. What I'm trying to do in the first half or the first quarter, second quarter, to let you know that pass that you caught then, oh, you felt that. So now maybe you get arms get a little shorter. Arms get a little shorter. Now you, you're coming across the middle. It's yeah. price to pay for coming across yeah. the middle. They yeah. no longer have that price mm-hmm. to pay. You no. know what? Anybody could go across the middle. You had receivers that's like, listen, I'm staying outside these numbers. Right. I don't work in between the numbers right. because I know it's a price to pay. Yes. They don't have that anymore. No, nah, no. Nah. But that's what it was. It was about intimidation. 
and the Steelers and the, and the Ravens, they still played that brand of football. Mm -hmm. They're one of the few teams that still, well, y'all guys don't play that kind of defense anymore. Y'all don't really play. But Come the on, Ravens now. still. Huh? Come on. Man, you know the Steelers don't play that brand of defense anymore. Y'all don't play. Listen, but the Ravens still play that brand. We're building to there. Okay. We build into there. Y'all The last two games, we, we've been pretty, pretty all right. Well, what y'all going to do with A.B. And, and Ben and Juju? A.B., Ben, and Juju? Yeah, they, they don't play defense. That, that's, that's what y'all Listen. Y'all used to be that type of team. Y'all y'all used to be intimidating, you know. Everybody used to be something different. <laughs> right now, everything is built for offense to yeah. get four, 500 yards of offense. Yeah. 30, and 40, you can't 40. hit the receiver, you can't hit the quarterback, yeah. and if you do, and the helmets make noise and something <laughs> pop, then it got to be a flag. It is. It is. It's definitely so skewed. The defenses of back then that you saw, no. you'll never see yeah, those that, numbers that, matched that type again. type of football gone. Yeah. But I'm glad I was a part of that rivalry because there's nothing like it in the NFL. Yeah, I agree with you. Atmosphere in uh, the Raven Stadium is, is very hostile. I think that's the only place that we go where we don't have a large majority of fans in the stands. They don't like us. I would, I would say that they hate us, you know, so it's not an uh, inviting atmosphere, but, uh, you know, it's something that we embrace. You like beating the Steelers fans because, you know, they've won so much, they still have the most Super Bowls in NFL history, so their fans are used to them winning, so it's nothing like going in there and getting a victory, be it Three Rivers or Heinz Field. So I like making those fans quiet. They fans is horrible. Like not, <laughs> they not nice. I mean, it's a it's a very unwelcoming atmosphere. Good. It's the only place where we don't have a great majority of fans in the stands. You no, know, especially let take over. we travel so well. But <laughs> there, I, I think y'all just don't let people buy tickets. Y'all y'all lock them out. Y'all get y'all little three thousand block allotment, and that's it. Fans not gonna say y'all have y'all overrunning the stadium like y'all normally do everywhere else y'all go. Yes. That's Dude, what I went to we went to Dallas Stadium and it was a good 50-50. Oh yeah. Oh, it was looking beautiful yeah. in there. I thought I was at a home game. <laughs> no. That's not happening there. No. No question. And, and plus, look, the rivalries like when I was in Denver, Oakland, or Kansas City, bro, y'all not about to come up here and try to overtake our stadium. We're not gonna let y'all come up here and think y'all run stuff. We'll see a few black and silver jerseys here or there, a few red jerseys. And when y'all came to Baltimore, you'll see a few black and gold jerseys, mm -hmm. but that thing purple out. But I'm going to tell you, the thing that we liked, I didn't like playing at the <laughs> Raven Stadium, but if they was letting Ray come out the tunnel, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh we loved it. Dude, it'll be on the sideline like, who they calling? Who they put? Hey, they calling the defense. Hey, listen, tell the rookies, hey. Watch when Ray come out this tunnel, they about to go crazy. Man, Ray come out that tunnel, it get us hyped. They ended up finding that out. Dude, yeah. they didn't call the defense out of the tunnel for the next like six, seven years when we were there. <laughs> it was crazy. The fans get so hyped. Dude, he got three songs. Ray got three songs. It started off, he come out, as soon as he come out, it's one song, right? And he looking around through the smoke. Now he about to go to grab the grass. They switching it. It's another song. Now we on artificial turf. They got a box of grass out here for this man, grass, right? Yep. A box of real grass. He go ahead, swipe down, grab it. He go smell it and throw it. After he throw it, they pop another song on. He go ahead, hit the dance. Yeah. Man, we be over there so hyped. Be like, man, we told we told him at the Pro Bowl. We like, man, you know they get us hyped after we had won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, that that get us hyped. They ain't let them boys out that tunnel for another six, seven years. <laughs> We had a hard time winning the game over yeah. there. After that. <laughs> my mom was a Steelers fan, and uh, in first grade, uh, my brothers was in fourth grade, and we ended up taking our picture, uh, our school uh, our yearbook picture in Franco Harris jersey. So I've always been a Steelers fan, um, but not when we play. I think we were the first team to beat them in Heinz Field. It's always nice to, to be the first at something because we knew they were going to be playing in Heinz Field forever. And so when you look at it and say, okay, who's the first team to, to beat the, the Steelers in their new home? That's us. But the Steelers were tough. They're well coached, disciplined team that plays hard, and that's what you want. They'll fight. You want to fight, they'll fight. If you want to play it, you know, snap the whistle, they'll play snap the whistle. You want to play snap the after the whistle. They'll play it how you want to play it. And just know it's going to be a physical ball game. You need to be on your best behavior because they're coming. You need to meet that fire with your fire, and everything will be just fine. But if you go out there half-stepping, they're going to knock your block off, and they know if they come half-stepping, you're going to knock their block off. There's nothing not to like about this game. If you like physicality, if you like in your face, you like trash talking, you like I'm trying to knock you through the dirt, 
this right. is the game for you. If right. you want that pretty stuff where you're going to see 45, 42, this is not the game for you. Yeah. Well, see, even going back to running the ball, you don't you don't run the ball on us. Like, that was our big our big thing is you're not going to run the ball in. Right. Even when Coach Tomlin got there, right. you know, we still had that mentality. Right. And we're on the goal line. And it's first down, second down, third down. And they, they go for it on fourth, and they pass the ball. And we come off the sideline, and we're like, yeah, da 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 everything <laughs> else. They ain't run the ball in. And he like, what, what you touch? talking about? They got a touchdown. We're like, we don't care. They ain't run it in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, but that's how you pride yourself. Yeah. What, whatever your strength <laughs> is, you don't want them to get you at your strength. No question. You are a running team. Raiding them with a running team. They went the entire season, and they didn't give up a 100-yard rushing. And they only give up a 1,000 yards total rush. Mm-hmm. So they prided themselves on that. The Steelers prided themselves because, like I said, it goes back to Ham and Lambert and Joe Green and all these great Hall of Fame players. That's what you're measured against. Mm-hmm. If you're a Steeler and you play defense, no question. that's what you're measured against. We had the same thing in 2008. We didn't give up 1,000 either. Yeah, so that's the standard. No question. The standard is what's been set forth. So now moving forward, the Ravens, the way when you step into that building, it's Ed Reed, it's Ray Lewis, it's mm-hmm. Suggs, it's all these great, the C.J. Moses, right. it's all these guys that came before you, just like the Joe Greens and the Mel Blunts and no the Lamberts and the Hams. They're up on the wall. Passing. That's what you got to go past every day. They no. got the, they got a whole set of linebackers, D-line, and it's, that wall is right there. And, and if, you play, that wall. if you play if you play in Pittsburgh, it's linebacker you. No question. I mean, from the Hams and the Lamberts to the Porters, the Gildens, the James. So that's what they're up against. Now it's T.J. Watt's turn. He's up. Definitely. But the standard has been set. That's what you play against. Exactly. You, you, you play to you the You don't want to be that guy that, oh, you know what? The Steelers, they had a great set of linebackers here and here. Oh, well, don't count that guy. Right. I don't want to be in that conversation right, exactly. when you don't count that guy. Right. And that's the thing is, is that when you play football, you play good football, you play great football, you don't play opponent. You play to a standard. And the standard when you play for Baltimore is that you play physical, you play tough, you play hard. When you're in Pittsburgh, you play physical, you play tough, you play hard. That's the standard that's being implemented, and that's the standard in which you play for. The Packers and the Bears might have a longer rivalry, right. but it's hard for me to believe that there's a more physical, a more intimidating, a more passionate rivalry with more on the line. Of the last couple of years, Chicago and Green Bay really hadn't had any meaning. The winner of that game is not going to the playoff. The winner of that game is not going to win the division, but that seems to be every year a reoccurring theme. The winner of these ravens Steeler games, that's the team that's going to win the division, and that's the team probably going to knock the other team out of the playoffs. Yeah, right. those were two games that, you know, after you were done with them, the next day you sitting in the ice tub. Yeah. You, know, you, <laughs> you, you knew you were the football right. game. Right. You knew you was in the game. Yeah. You knew you played, you yeah. know, 60 minutes plus. Steelers, come on, stop playing. Beat the off them. Uh, Stop playing. Yeah, it's coming back. No, nah, yeah, yeah, y'all defense. Defense, defense is coming back. Mm-hmm. Listen, we're going to smash Suggs, on Suggs them. probably have about two, three sacks. Suggs, what Suggs do last time? Nothing. Put, hung 30 on y'all. Nothing. Suggs ain't hung nothing. Mm-hmm. He can't play offense. Suggs hit by 30 on y'all. Y'all couldn't get the ball. Y'all couldn't get no, couldn't no D. Couldn't that was, anything. listen, that was before we started getting everything together. It's coming together right now. You go see. Y'all better come together with his L again. Uh-uh. Go come with this W. Nah. I tell you, you know what? Listen. Let's bet. You not. Let's bet. What you want to bet? bet? Make it light on yourself. Mmm. Let's uh, listen. Uh, let's bet twenty anytime push-ups. Why? Right. Now I want wings. I want two hundred flats. 200 flats? 200 flats. I want 20 anytime push ups. All right. Bet. Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> Ooh, <wait. laughs> 20 anytime.